What's up everyone, Void here at the CLG Performance Center and today I'll be teaching you something I'm sure you've tried to do, might have failed, edge guarding, especially edge guarding your friends. Now it's a little complicated and I'm gonna try to break it down as much as I can, so bear with me and let's get started. But don't forget, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Edge guarding is the process of stopping your opponent from recovering either to the stage or to the ledge after they've been knocked off. Essentially, it's how you want to take your opponent's stop, not by killing them with a the move, but by stopping their recoveries and essentially either down airing them or back airing them to where they can no longer recover. And I'm just letting you guys know right now, edge guarding is not easy. Everything I say in this video will not be the law, but it will be up to you to understand the state of the edge guard, what exactly is going through your opponent's mind, and how you can stop that. And this might be different every time, but after enough exposure, you'll get really good at it, I promise you. So the way I'll be describing this is like a flow chart, and I'll be detailing each step and what exactly happens in each step so you know how to properly expose your opponent's recoveries. Step one. Analyze the state of your opponent. What resources do they have? Do they have a double jump? Do they have their air dodge? Do they have some type of special move that gives them mobility? Make sure you recognize if your opponent has these first before initiating the edge fight. An example of a special move that gives your character mobility is Sheik's Bouncing Fish. Sheik's Bouncing Fish is a resource she has that can help her recover when she's kind of far from the stage and it's something you as the player will have to take into account when you want to edge guard Sheik. Step number two, who is your opponent's character and how do they like to recover? If your opponent's character has a very good vertical up B, they're going to be much more likely to sink low, for example Lucina. But if your opponent has a really strong horizontal recovery, maybe let's say Fox, Falco, then your opponent might be more prone to recovering horizontally. You need to recognize your opponent's resources and how they want to use their resources optimally with their character. Step number three, what character are you playing and what is your character's toolkit? If you're a character that can cover horizontal recoveries amazingly, make sure you do that. If your opponent tries to lose into the ledge, cover it. Make sure you punish them as hard as you can for just simply trying to get back to the stage as this is one of the strongest advantageous states you can have in the game. Another thing to note, if your character is good at covering horizontal recoveries, your opponent probably knows this, so they're gonna go low. And it's up to you to recognize that they're going low and to punish their low recovery. Drop down there and hit them with a clean back air, making them know, even though that might not be your character's strongest tools, you can still use them to do the best of your advantage. Another thing to note is how does your opponent like to recover? Do they like to go high and swing or do they like to go as low as possible? That's up to you to find out what their habits are and which move you can use to punish it properly. For example, if a Fox player decides to go low with their up B, make sure to go down there and spike them. Show them that they can't go low. And if they go high and they try to lose it onto the stage, forward smash. You have options to cover majority of your opponent's recoveries as long as you position yourself properly. And that's the biggest thing when it comes to edge guarding. Step number four, know your character's limits. There's a lot of situations in edge guarding where your character just might not be able to edge guard. They might not be able to go that deep off stage. And it's very important to recognize this because there are scenarios where your character can go that deep and they can make it back, resulting in such an early stock from your opponent. And it's up to you to know your character's limits and to know whether you can make the play. I can't tell you exactly what the limit is, but once you know your character's limits, you can start taking stocks way earlier. You start spiking your friends and really showing them who's the boss. Bonus, teching. Let me do a quick rundown on what teching is to make sure you know what it is, and what you can do with it. Sometimes your positioning might be a little lackluster and you might see yourself in a very dangerous scenario. And that's where this beautiful thing called teching comes into play. So to perform this technique, you basically have to understand what teching is, first of all. I'm sure you've experienced it. Somebody hits you on stage, you hit one of the triggers, and you either get up normally very quickly, or you end up doing an immediate roll left to right. That's teching. This also applies off stage, though. When you're hitting either a diagonal surface or a wall, you can hit one of the triggers to tech, either jump off the wall or simply just tech off the stage and not get stage spiked to your death. People ask me a lot, but the main way to get good at teching is to preemptively think about it. 
know that you're in a recovery situation or you're fighting a character with a really strong up B and you might end up having to tech, just think about it beforehand. That way you know you have to get ready to react to the situation. And when you finally get hit, maybe you won't, maybe you will, but when you do get hit, make sure you hit one of your triggers and get that tech. An amazing example of this is when Ganondorf hits you with his up B off stage. Ganondorf will grab you, there will be some electricity, and you know that you're gonna have to hit the stage. You know that your character is gonna get sent into the stage, and if you don't tech, you might lose your shot. So this is a great way to understand preemptively, you know you have to tech and you can get ready to tech. A harder example would be Lucina's up B, where you have to really know that she just might do it. You won't have that much time to react, but if you know beforehand, it'll help you out definitely. So in this specific clip versus Light, Light tries to edge guard me with his Firefox. Knowing this, I preemptively recognize the situation and I tech his Firefox to make sure I can live another day. So in this clip versus Light, I use F-Tilt to get Light off stage. He uses his double jump and side B to recover and I hit him again. Knowing he no longer has his double jump, I position myself to make sure he can't recover for free and down air his up B. So starting this clip, Wadi uses his double jump to try to recover back to the stage. I cover his air dodge to ledge, keeping him off stage knowing he still doesn't have his double jump and knowing Sheik's limits, I cover the air dodge with a very low back air to take the stock and recover. Now that you've seen examples of edge guarding, it's up to you to flesh out your habits and essentially build up your edge guarding flow chart. Trial and error is the best way to improve your edge guarding so you know how far your character can go what characters you can stop from recovering pretty easily, which ones are harder, and which of your friends you can take their stocks for free because they don't know how to recover and you know how to edge guard. Let me ask you, who's your favorite character to edge guard? Is it Falcon? It's probably Falcon. Remember to leave it in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel so you can see more of the guides to come and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.